Are aliens using Antarctica as a home base? Or is Antarctica their real home? Strange, inexplicable sightings of incredibly advanced aircraft have been noted for hundreds of years all across the planet, leading many researchers to believe we may never have been alone on this planet. There is speculation about the likelihood of a strange variety of beings that may have been native to Antarctica before it froze over during the Middle Ages. Some even suggest that Egyptian pharaohs and world rulers may have regularly conducted trade with a far-off yet unknown mysterious culture. This culture is now forced to abandon the surface, living reclusive lives deep beneath the frozen ice sheet that now makes the surface of their once fertile homeworld a desolate wasteland. Helping support further research into Antarctica is critical for the future of humanity and requires support from viewers at either Patreon or any of the links in the description box below. What might be found at the South Pole could change life as we know it on Earth forever. This was always one of my favorite quotes from Hamlet. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. I think what we have found in Antarctica confirms that. There are questions that no one is asking. And those that ask those questions are labeled as crazy. Some have asked if I've questioned my sanity. I think we all do at some point. Anyone who is a free thinker, anyone who tries to challenge the status quo, at some point is probably going to have to ask themselves, why am I doing that? Well, there's a story out, and it's over on Fox, about these 12,000 German freedom fighters that fled after World War II to Argentina. Now, the world was a very different place in the late 40s. And I truly believe that Argentina, for them, was a gateway to even a newer world that had been discovered. South America hadn't been explored. Itself was... Um, very rugged, and you could disappear places, and many did. The reason it's made Fox, of course, is because there's a bunch of mammon worshippers out there that want to get a hold of the, the bank accounts, the Swiss bank accounts that have these funds in them, and of course that's their god, so that's what they uh, direct their energies toward. But if they truly did escape to Antarctica and had found some place underneath the ice that was habitable. And we've talked about, of course, the source of heat being the volcanoes, the copious amounts of fresh water, um, the volcanic soil being great for growing things. There would have been hazards. And one of those things that's very basic um, is carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. One of the earliest finds that I had made and I want to share it with you guys. And it's a simple find. Was this. You see, had they been searching for a good place to settle in one of these large underground caverns, they might have stumbled across a cavern where um, things were growing better than anywhere else. And it might have been warmer, but that probably was evidence of um, carbon dioxide being trapped or carbon monoxide or both and given that it's poisonous it would have been a problem and they might have learned the hard way i've made allegation that what you're looking at on your screen here is a constructed entrance or exit it might be a constructed vent and it's very hard to get a scale on this um but as you can see this has a very nice flat cut platform a nice, beautiful arched entry. And I've measured this before for people, but I'll measure it again, just so anyone who's new can see how big this is. We'll go ahead and measure in feet real quick. Across the front, it's about, about 25 feet. So this is the width, width wise, we're talking about two lane highway, roughly. And as far as the height, oh, and for those of you, I'm sorry, 
in Europe, 7.23 meters. Let's go ahead and clear that out. Um, Height-wise, I'm just ballparking here, about 15 meters high, which would make it about, about 50 feet high. So, 50 feet high, 25 feet across, you know, definitely able to get vehicles, for sure, in and out through here. But I really think, since we don't see a lot of evidence of activity, I mean, you could make some allegation of this around here. The wind blows so uh, continually down here that any tracks you had made would be immediately covered up unless you were in some kind of a shrouded area. I think what we're looking at here might be a constructed vent. Also, one of the things that we had all, we had covered in other videos, and this is, I think, one of my best finds, is this burial mound. Best in the sense that it's evidence of intelligent life. I wonder if, of course, if there had been 12,000 people escape and some percentage to Argentina and then some percentage went to Antarctica, they would have had a f to find a way to deal with their dead. And might not be very easy to dig a graveyard in a hard, frozen place like this. There might have been um, land, I said, underneath the ice that could be arable, the volcanic soil, but they may not have enough of it to you know, warrant a graveyard given what they would have to grow to support, you know, a population of that size. So maybe what we're looking at here isn't ancient. Maybe what we're looking at here is a way that they adapted to dealing with um, the loss of life. It would be, I suppose, probably not too hard to carve some type of a tomb out of the ice. It wouldn't be like there was any shortage of either fresh water to uh, help melt it or help create it and form it somehow. I mean, and this is all just theory, of course. Because when you look at this and you zoom out from where it is, it's the side of a mountain, and you can see that wherever the constructors of this came from, they had to have known a little bit about why this had to be where it is, because they put it outside and they left the top open because they would have known that decaying flesh would give off, um, unfortunately, not trying to be gross, but it gives off gases and things that are poisonous. And you can't have this around anywhere you're living. One of the strangest things that I found in this region, and I know we've covered this before, but it still bears looking into, directly above this, there are markings. There's a V. There's what looks like a standard pi symbol next to it that looks like a 2. And I've made allegation even an R. And you can look at this a couple of different ways. This is upside down. Very strange stuff. Um, yesterday, I had shown this walled fortress right here. And the reason I was in the region is because this is where everything would have coalesced. Because this is a volcano. And I wanted to show this. And out here in the center, and I don't know how anyone could explain this. Let's see if I can bring this up. I want to show how wind, how the opening up here, see how completely flat it is with no disturbances at all, except strangely here in the middle. And there are these three points that are equidistant to each other. And look what's at the top here. Now this is very, kind of generally speaking, um, close to that other burial mound that we just showed right here. See how you have the perfect circle around it? Something is here 
sticking up out of the center of this caldera. And I wonder if it's some kind of a vent. I don't know what else, how you could say this is natural, because if this is a volcano and it's covered in ice and snow, this should be just one giant, huge, I guess, lack of a better term, puddle of snow. What would be out here and why, especially here? And I guess we'll do a quick measure on this, too. Let's see, I guess we'll start by measuring across this circular region. About 90 feet, 91.69 feet, which is about 28 meters, 27.95 meters across. This structure here in the middle of it has a height of about 10 and a half meters or 34 feet. And across... We'll go across the bottom here, about 24 feet, or about 7.3 meters. Somebody made this out here. Somebody created this. And this second feature up here, it's very kind of hard to see, but it looks like Right here at the top, it has a bit of a rectangular look to it. And the weird part about this, and I'm going to show this because it's just phenomenally crazy. The chances of this being natural and these two points down here being equidistant to this point are astronomically small and I'll measure this for you I'll give you the location just like I always do Google Earth Pro got a laptop got a computer can download it for yourself can take my coordinates punch it in and look at this on your own device let's go ahead and measure again all right starting here going to the center here we have 382 meters, or 1,254 feet. Okay? Now, we're just going to take this line. And as you can see, I mean, within a foot or two, the exact same distance, 1,254 feet, 382 meters between here and here and between here and here. Clearly, clearly, this is a construction of some sort. And there's no labels, meaning that if you go to Google Earth Pro and you tick all of the boxes that says places and borders and labels and all this kind of stuff, there's no um, known station. And I don't know why anyone would create some type of a science station in the middle of an active volcano. And it is active in the sense that underneath there's lava and it's not, of course, erupting at the moment, but who knows? And just to zoom out a little farther, I don't have all of it selected right now, but let me show you all the things I've found around here. These are all locations from other videos. And we've traced all sorts of stuff to it and from it. I could sit here for an hour. Um, one of the, the most exciting that we had found was over here. And I'm sure a lot of you will, will remember it. Let's see if I can bring up the proper year. Oh, here we go. 10-22-2012. Who remembers that? 
I'm actually more curious about what this is next to it. Very, very strange. And I would, I would like to some, somebody to explain how this could be created out of wind, ice, rock, and snow. How many of these have we found? Three, four, five, six? It's very clearly a skull. And I'm going to go ahead and do what they call a circle measure on the skull because it's just easier. It's a little bit more accurate. Conservatively, five meters radius, which is 18 feet. So clearly the skull of a giant. Right on the edge of this volcano. If there were people living down here, this would be where they would have looked to settle. Why? You have the volcano, you have the volcanic heat, you have the volcanic soil, you have the ability to grow vegetation. Of course, the heat would turn ice to water, probably underground rivers. And you would have access to pretty much everything you would need. And all you would need to probably do is figure out venting. And I'm sure the vast majority of it would vent itself. But you would more than likely have to do some of your own. So I'm going to continue to look in this region, and I guess we will leave with just going back to, uh, to this. and Because I always like to leave with something that even naysayers would have to scratch their head at. How could something like this just occur? Especially with two 90-degree angles here and this nice perfectly formed archway here. So thank you everyone for all of your continued support. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. I'm sure you've heard the news. Ancient Antarctica is like a time capsule waiting to be unlocked. And you can be a part of this journey. Beneath the ice lies a world of untold mysteries, prehistoric landscapes, ancient ecosystems, even potential signs of early human life. But here's the catch. Uncovering these secrets requires cutting-edge technology and relentless research. That's where you come in. By pledging just $1 on Patreon or subscribing to our channel, you can support our mission to uncover the hidden past of this frozen continent. Every dollar helps us get closer to groundbreaking discoveries that could rewrite history. So, are you ready to be part of something epic? Click the link, join our community, and let's unravel the mysteries of ancient Antarctica together. Because every mystery solved brings us one step closer to understanding our own story. Subscribe now and let's make history.